we have a laundry list of reasons uh, for our slackness in seeking our Lord Jesus Christ. And the truth is, is that all of our excuses should be examined very carefully. So if a, t- if a rich tax collector of a high stature in society is willing to overcome all the distractions and obstacles around him and humble himself and look like a fool and climb up a tree to see Jesus, then our reasons for not seeking Christ more faithfully are probably not that good. In other words, we could put it another way. If we have a reason why we aren't devoting ourselves to seeking God in our lives, then probably we don't have our lives properly ordered. We don't have our priorities straight. Zacchaeus is an example of someone that had a disordered life. He was rich, and he gained his wealth from others in a legal way. He was collecting taxes, but he took extra for himself. All of us have a disordered life at some point in our lives. Maybe we're living a disordered life today, now. Zacchaeus teaches us that the first step to change a true repentance is desiring something better. In this case, it's desiring someone better. So how do we desire to see our Lord Jesus Christ with the same desire as Zacchaeus? Can you imagine if, if I had this great desire, I would spend more time finding our Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospels. I would spend more time struggling to pray fervently, focused, not simply just going through the motions and going through the words. And what would our Lord have given me in return? He would have given me a new life. Zacchaeus clearly demonstrates for some of the steps that are necessary for anyone who are desiring to be healed and to be saved. Many people say that they desire to be saved. They desire to know God. They desire to acquire peace. But we cannot accept, expect to desire such great things without some kind of effort from our parts. We have to work. It doesn't come passively. If someone desires, for example, to be a great athlete, we don't just sit on the couch in the recliner or whatever it is and watch a lot of sports on TV and we think that's going to make us reach our goals. It's not going to help us progress. In the same way, if someone wants to be a great author and write the next American, uh, the great American novel, we have to do more than just read other people's works. Can't just daydream about it uh, the stories in our minds forever. You know, at some point in our lives, we're going to have to put pen to paper or sit in front of a computer and type and do the work. So the work of salvation and of knowing God is infinitely more difficult than being a great athlete or being a great accomplished author. Because if we're being honest with ourselves, it involves every single part of us every moment of our lives. If we say that we desire these great things from God, we will have to work to prove that to be true. So let's take a closer look at the life of Zacchaeus and to see what's required of us. First, we're told that Zacchaeus sought to see who Jesus was. An amazing first simple step. Notice that we are not told that he sought to see Jesus, but to see who Jesus was. In other words, Zacchaeus had a desire to know more about the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't enough to trust the word of others. He had an intense desire to search for himself. But this intense desire was not enough. He acted on his desire. He climbed up into a tree. Zacchaeus could have made many excuses as soon as desire developed in his heart. He could have said, there's just too many people. I'm just not tall enough to see over the crowds. 
Or even, I would climb into the tree, but I'm afraid I'm going to look foolish. But he didn't make any excuses. He didn't, he didn't justify inaction. He didn't justify inaction. If we are serious about knowing Christ, we are not going to make excuses to justify our own inaction. And so this means that we have to be abundantly honest with ourselves, which is maybe the most difficult thing for us to do. So the Lord will not appear and force you to seek him or to pursue him. No, we must cooperate with the grace of God that's given to you and force yourself and your will towards him. The next thing we learn from the story of Zacchaeus is when our Lord Jesus Christ looked up into the tree and saw Zacchaeus, he said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for I must stay at your house today. The next step we see is a simple one. Zacchaeus promptly obeys the Lord without hesitation. How often do we hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ in scripture or in a sermon or things like that? How often do we hear his word in our conscience, in our hearts? And the question that we have to ask ourselves is, are we responding to the word of, of, the, of the Lord like Zacchaeus? Do we obey the Lord quickly, without hesitation? Again, this is going to require us to be truly honest with ourselves. Next, as our Lord Jesus draws near and enters the house of Zacchaeus, we witness a transformation happening. We shouldn't be surprised that this is happening because the presence of our Lord is full of power and full of wonder, even from the first moment. First, he gave half of his goods to the poor. This is truly a sign, a, a, a points to love of the Son of God that has really entered the heart of the man and his mind. He was being healed and restored by Christ to the true image and likeness of God. And so, in addition to demonstrating this love to the poor, he is also showing us that he is completely detached from materialism. Wealth is no longer the priority in his life. Perhaps that's when we know someone is genuine about what they're, what they're saying. Is you put your money where your mouth is. In addition to his generosity to the poor and his detachment, we see another step on his, on his path to salvation. He tries to make amends with those who are around him, saying that he will restore fourfold of whatever he has taken unlawfully or defrauded from anyone. Fourfold. Can you imagine? If he unjustly charged an extra $10, he would pay back 40 if he took an extra $100, he would give back $400, and so on. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, do we need to make amends with those people around us? Do we need to make things right with the people that we haven't treated well? All of the steps that Caius took to gain salvation are steps that each one of us should be honest with ourselves and willing to take. Desiring to see who Christ is, following your desire with action, promptly obeying our Lord Jesus Christ when he gives you commands, giving alms to the poor and to the needy, repenting not only towards God, but by making things right to those who you have wronged at any time. All of these steps are fairly straightforward, but they require honesty. They require a look inwards, and that's sometimes uncomfortable. But they call us to action. They are difficult, but Christ is infinitely worth any momentary, uncomfortable feeling that we may face. Every single man, woman, and child will have some obstacles or difficulties that can potentially keep them at a distance from God. Do these allow us to create excuses or do they challenge us 
to struggle and to fight to know him. Zacchaeus demonstrates his willingness to struggle to know God. He may look foolish as a grown man climbing a tree. Probably got dirty and sweaty, but it took effort. And wasn't it worth it? We each say that we want to know God more, that we want to have a deeper relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. So, what are we doing to make that happen? This is why the church places this reading at the beginning of the Coptic year. What are we doing to make that happen? And how do we reflect from last year? Oftentimes we say that we're too busy, we're too distracted to fast. We don't realize it's Wednesday. We don't realize that it's Friday. We're too distracted or busy to pray. We're too distracted or busy to study the Word of God, to even approach the writings of the fathers, to see the lives of the saints. How would Zacchaeus respond in these same situations? How much do we desire to enter into a deep relationship with our beloved? My advice, we have to work on developing a relationship with God as if your life depended on it. Don't be afraid of how you will look. Don't be afraid of what other people will say, your coworkers. Don't be afraid of what your peers at school will say. Because the fact is, they're probably going to say some things. Don't be afraid of the pain and the struggle because, if we're being honest, there will be pain and there will be struggle. Don't be afraid that you're going to fall short of your goal because perhaps we'll fall short daily. But if we are faithful, he is yet more faithful. So to conclude, Zacchaeus followed the path of his desire and his hunger for our Lord Jesus Christ by his faithfulness in a very few things. And the Lord granted salvation to him and his household all within the same day. We want to know Christ, but in truth, Christ wants to be known by us. This reminds me of what Peter was talking about in the adult meeting upstairs last Sunday. Christ wants to be known by us, through us. He wants to dwell among us and to say to us, today salvation has come to this house. So we have to pour ourselves into the task of climbing our trees. Remember that it was through a tree that Adam and Eve were banished. But it's through a tree that Zacchaeus found paradise. And he found the man, he found God, and it was only through him that was granted not only to see Christ, but to sit down and to dine with him. So we pray that we struggle to climb the trees that lead our minds upwards to the heavens. May our Lord Jesus Christ come to dwell in our homes and in our hearts, and to allow us to share in this righteous salvation. May he, we not rest until we hear the blessed words, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.